Hey everyone and welcome to another episode about the LEGO Train Automated Container Terminal. Well, as you can see, I've moved the cranes to the uh, floor and I'm uh, busy positioning them uh, inside the room. The idea is that the red crane will be on this side of the room and the blue crane will be on the opposite side around here somewhere. Now, as you can see, the blue crane has a dead end for the monorail system. But the red crane does not. And the idea is that um, as follows. The green base plate, that is where the uh, red crane will be connected. So the whole thing will move a bit to the left, of course. And then uh, the motor wheels can actually go through a bit of layout to a certain point where there will be a maintenance shed. And uh, where they can have some uh, undergo some uh, servicing, some uh, maintenance. So, um, and I was like, okay, that's a cool idea. Let's automate that because, you know, <laughs> that's my thing. So um, I have three monorails. I have an orange one, a green, a blue one, and a green one. I only need two monorails for uh, the communication of the containers between two, uh, the two cranes. That means that one monorail is always a spare. In, uh, well, in the engine shed then, I believe in the maintenance shed that will be uh, around here somewhere. Now, the problem is that I have one monorail that is spare, but I have two monorails that are running around. That means that I need to switch tracks with the uh, spare monorail to um, replace the other one that's going into the shed. So that's why I need a system with two points that can uh, switch tracks um, those are in the empty spots i'll show you in a minute right one there and one over here and um, then i can uh, switch tracks um, but the thing is then i need to motorize the points because i'm not want to do it all full automatically of course now for the monorail switches to switch them on and off i use 4d bricks uh, servo motors. I bought them like four years ago. They were uh, available back then. Right now they aren't anymore. It's a long story, sad story about uh, 4D bricks. Um, I've spoken with the uh, CEO of 4D bricks and uh, yeah, it's quite a sad story. I believe it was one week before they ended their Kickstart, Kickstarter campaign, something like that, uh, Trix Bricks stole their idea came out and uh, they lost a lot of customers on that so but that's a whole other story don't want to go in that right now um, but what I want to tell you is that I don't have these switches for the points that are in the monorail track so that's going to be an issue so um, I need to motorize the switches my, the points myself so that's why I have made this so let's have a look at this. So there are basically two ways to motorize a monorail point. And that is pneumatically, or that is with a linear actuator in combination with a motor. So both have advantages and disadvantages. So let's have a look. So I built two systems. And um, one thing I need to mention is that when you have a monorail system, there's this little point sticking out here. I don't know if you can see it. But when the monorail comes along in this direction, it pushes against this lever here. And normally that would make the switch move into that direction that it continues on the track. So it switches automatically when the monorail arrives. I cannot do that anymore because now there's a motor or in this case a pneumatic piston that keeps the whole thing in place. So that uh, lever doesn't work anymore. Um, isn't a big issue, I just have to, to switch the point always myself. Alright, let's have a look. First we got the, uh, with the linear actuator here, I got a uh, motor attached to it. And let's see how it performs. Well, that moves pretty well, as you can see. And now the, uh, the uh, how do you call this? This one <laughs> kicks in, I don't know how you call it, it starts slipping at a certain uh, momentum. Now, there's one thing that I wanted to show you, and that's a flaw in this design. If I let it go too far, 
it starts to rip itself apart. So, <laughs> so with this design, and um, I made this design like this, because right now, if you have a monorail car, it can just barely, but it passes over like this, you see? So there's nothing in between. So it's a very compact system, but it's not very strong at the moment. I could improve it, of course. Now the second one, we got a pneumatic system with just a pneumatic switch. We got an air tank, so I can uh, pump some uh, air inside, build up some pressure. And then when I switch it, you see? Well, as you can see, that moved very, very smoothly. So I'm going for the pneumatic system for that point. But there's a downside of the pneumatic system, which the electrical system doesn't have. And that is you need air. And of course, I have air. I have a, a big ass compressor here that I'm using for the, uh, for the cranes. So I have air, but the problem is that I need to bring air to this point. And uh, so I need an air hose somewhere. Um, and I don't know if I can access it very good or not. So, you know, when you have an electrical wire, which is uh, on this motor, you can easily fit it, when you flatten it a bit, underneath the monorail track. But you cannot do that with a pneumatic tube. It's just, it's too high, you know? Well, actually, <laughs> doesn't look too bad. It actually, yeah. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's better than I thought. So maybe the downside of pneumatic system isn't that much. But I don't, I don't very much like the look of it right now that there's, there's a, this, this gap between, you know, well, you know, I try to make it look good and this is not entirely good. So, but it's, it's doable. So, all right, um, that's it. So I wanted to show you this. Um, I'm going for the pneumatic system. Because pneumatics, you know, I love it. It's, it's very simple. Also control-wise, it's just like I do the other pneumatic stuff. It's just a, a servo motor that's going to move this to that and that position. And I don't have to worry about timing, how long the motor will be enabled and stuff like that. It's just plain and simple. All right, um, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Uh, next episode will be interesting because then we're gonna play with the uh, with the whole system I'm gonna I don't know yet how but I'm gonna set everything up and like I said I'm a bit afraid that it won't fit lengthwise also because um, which I didn't mention is the train that you see there the red train is in between two monorails so uh, that was done on purpose. I knew that there was a, some kind of an issue or actually not, because I knew, I knew it from the start. The problem is that if you want to move the train out of between the two monorail tracks, you need the monorail tracks to go up. And um, that's doable, of course. Monorails are built for that. So, um, but it takes length. So I'm gonna start all the way back there. There's the red crane in place right now where the, uh, somewhere there with green, green base plate. And then we'll get a piece of monorail track after the red crane that goes up where the train goes under and then the monorail comes down again and enters the blue crane. But lengthwise that will be a challenge, I think. So uh, we'll just have to look. So that will be our next episode, which will be a cool episode, I think. Because then we're going to see how the, the system will work, how it all looks. So um, in the meantime, I'm busy de yellowing Lego monorail parts. I de yellowed almost all the parts that you see here, including some uh, that are still drying over there. So uh, they're all nice and shiny. Not all of them, I believe. <laughs> I believe I have to do something on the, uh, the red crane as well. Those are a bit yellow, but um, you can mistake also a bit because, yeah, old light gray is a bit yellow compared to the light bluish gray that is around it. Well, anyway, thank you for watching. 
uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, please let me know. And um, like, subscribe if you haven't done so. And hope to see you next time. Bye.